Hello. Today I'm doing a high-level overview of the differences between single-cell RNA sequencing and bulk RNA sequencing, SC standing for single cell. You start with, in both cases, your tissue, whatever you want to sequence. For bulk RNA sequencing, you're looking at the total RNA, or cDNA. So if you imagine that you have, you know, a million or more cells, depending on the density or the concentration of whatever you're trying to sequence, needs to be a certain concentration in order to be prepared, depending on whatever that preparation protocol is, you're going to essentially lyse all of the cells and collect all of the RNA within them into one batch. And so you can have replicates, you can do this for different cells from different conditions, and all of it is sequenced together to create bulk expression data. So each sample that you create of total RNA, that then gets its own FASTEC file which can be analyzed. For the single cell RNA sequencing, the pipeline is different because every single individual cell is barcoded and thereby sequenced. And you get single cell expression data which we'll talk about more in the next slide. This here displays the single cell RNA sequencing pipeline, which I'm going to first because I believe it's a little bit harder to understand. One of the most popular ways that it's effectuated is through drop-based RNA sequencing, where essentially each individual cell is collected into a drop with beads. These beads contain different cell barcodes, UMIs, unique identifiers, that are able to then latch on to all of the different RNAs within the cell. And this allows, in the sequencing process, for you to identify which RNAs go with which cells. And this allows you to actually come up with individual cell sort of profiles as you can see here in the read counts table each cell gets its own gene counts for all of the different genes you're measuring or fragments whatever it may be and then you basically place these on a dimensionality reduction analysis profile these can often be TSNE, UMAP or PCA the traditional sort of form, and then they, the different cells, based on whatever this dimensionality reduction analysis, those then get clustered into groups, and it's these groups that you label based on perhaps a popular cell signal or, you know, cell marker or other, or other methodology. You'll sort of come up with these clusters and name them for specific cells. And you use these clusters to perform even deeper analysis, whatever you're trying to accomplish with the research problem. However, you're trying to really understand the interactions between these cells within the tissue or otherwise. Bulk RNA-seq is a little bit older. It was developed shortly after genomic sequencing, next generation sequencing technology started becoming cheaper in the mid-2000s. Single cell RNA-seq, by contrast, was introduced in 2009 and became more popular starting in 2014. But they're not really too far apart. The actual term RNA sequencing was first used in a paper in 2008. I've already mentioned sort of the bulk RNA sequencing pipeline, but you can sort of see here how cDNA is generated from mRNAs and what it sort of represents on the epigenetic level within a cell. We're certainly not just simply looking at the DNA or the genetics, we're looking at the mRNA, and that can provide sort of this epigenetic layout. And as you see, based on whatever your sequencing technology is, whether it's pair-end or single-end, you know, depending on those 
I recently did a video on the difference between those, so I'd recommend that you check that out. You can then align it and through that alignment process figure out perhaps introns or if it's just single end you can map it to the genome and thereby generate your reads and your read counts and so forth for the total mRNA of the samples. Now I mentioned originally that you're doing this on some amorphous tissue and here I'm going to go into depth on sort of what the specifications are. If you're doing a bulk RNA sequencing experiment you're more likely to do it on tissue that is homogeneous in some way. So for example on the left you have the THP1 monocytes. THP1 is a clonal monocyte. It's originally a leukemia from a cancer, but essentially all of the cells are supposed to look pretty similar to one another. So even though there may be some small transcriptomic differences, or in the case of a couple cells, very large transcriptomic differences if they're undergoing apoptosis or some other strange process, in general, the cells look the same. And so bulk RNA sequencing is appropriate here to measure the difference between two experimental conditions or otherwise. Single cell RNA sequencing, by contrast, is really good for examining more heterogeneous tissue, such as the lung tissue shown to the right, because you can really understand the differences between the different cells within this tissue and you can get truly a lot more granular and even though I'm not going to go through all of the different possible analysis that can be done on either bulk or single cell you can see here that bulk RNA sequencing to the left that analysis is a lot more straightforward you're looking at a couple of different conditions and generating differentially regulated gene lists for those different conditions Typically the gene lists are smaller and you can kind of examine those individual genes on a more granular level to understand what's going on. Now I know the diagram to the right is pretty, is pretty small, I apologize for that, but you can see that you need to do a lot more clustering and that, that clustering is really relevant in order to understand what the different cell types are and to identify what your groups are that you're ultimately going to be comparing in the experiment. And you can see on the bottom that you're still looking at different tr differentially regulated genes, but you're looking at it on a much larger context. Truly, there's a lot more big data generated for the analysis here. Single cell RNA-seq data, in addition to being more complex typically, will also suffer from more technical variation. This is simply due to the nature of the procedure. When you're looking at mRNA for a bulk RNA-seq experiment where you have a million or more cells that have been lysed, you're going to have a lot more mRNA quantity to actually work with, you know, counting up all, across all those cells. Whereas for a single cell, you'll only have the mRNA at the start for that single cell. For single cell RNA sequencing, you'll need a technology such as RT-PCR or otherwise in order to amplify the individual mRNA signals. And this amplification process it typically introduces a lot of technical noise. For example, there is dropout where a lowly expressed gene or you know even medium expressed gene simply won't be captured within the RT-PCR process and will thereby drop out and show a zero. So it's hard to really know whether a zero is due to biological variation or due to technical variation. There are a lot of tools including single cell imputation that tries to calculate drop off, drop out probabilities and thereby assign values to potential technical drop offs. And you can see how a tool such as MAGIC, which performs single cell imputation, can take data, uh, single cell data, and construct more biologically relevant conclusions, can sort of get at the more biologically significant aspects of your data by performing these kinds of mathematical comp 
calculations. Single cell and bulk RNA-seq data are, of course, by their very nature, not going to be equivalent. You can see here that there are certainly correlations, but drop-offs can certainly have their impact, and they're not always they're not always going to align. The heterogeneous tissue, even if you're looking at the same tissue and you you think that every cell is identical, really can never truly be identical and it's hard to find the one cell that perhaps will be identical to the bulk RNA-seq. You aren't going to find it. The two technologies are very different and it's hard to put them together to, in a way that creates meaningful comparisons. However, one strategy that's often used is deconvolution, where single-cell RNA-seq and bulk RNA-seq are put together to try and understand the composition of bulk RNA-seq data. So if somebody, you know, was did a bulk RNA-seq not on what they would believe to be a homogeneous tissue, such as the THP1 example mentioned earlier, and they did it on, you know, a more heterogeneous tissue, you could use these packages, programming packages that perform deconvolution in order to understand what the composition, what the different cell types are within the, your bulk RNA-seq sample, and thereby, you know, strengthen the conclusions and the data and the analysis that you're able to complete downstream whether it's for differentially regulated genes or otherwise. Thank you for listening.